Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of Burlington Matters. I am your host, Burlington Mayor Marianne Mead Ward, and I'm thrilled with the guests that we have on today's show. We try to showcase uh, interesting people and interesting topics here in the city of Burlington, and, and there's no end to them. They are limitless. Uh, I'm thrilled with the, the two guests that I have today uh, and very timely discussion uh, that we'll be having. So I'd like to welcome Hassan Raza, who who is the chair of Burlington's Mundialization Committee, and he's going to tell us what that word means <laughs> and what the Mundialization Committee does. Uh, and we also have Charles Minkin, who is the Appledorn Subcommittee Chair of the Mundialization Committee. Say that fast uh, a few times. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it right over to you, Hassan, to talk to us a little bit about uh, what the Mundialization Committee is, what it does, uh, the purpose, and uh, and some of the work that you've been involved in. Go ahead. For sure. Thank you. I'm going to start by saying thank you for having us, uh, uh, Mayor Marianne Mead Ward. It's, uh, it's great to always work with you. It's great to see you. And uh, um, uh, I've enjoyed our interactions on some of the events that uh, we've uh, had uh, hosted for the City of Burlington. And so I know it is a, a mouthful, you're right, saying it many times does practice uh, the word mundialization, uh, but it's all about globalization. And uh, what we're about is a citizens committee that is focused on managing the, the Twin City relationships for the city of Burlington. And we have great partnerships with our sister cities in Appledorn in the Netherlands and in Itabashi in Japan. And we've got a great crew on the committee that is very committed and passionate to having connections with people across the world and bringing them back into Burlington and learning and connecting and making uh, the most of you know, what our world really means uh, when we look at it from outside of Burlington. And uh, the third chapter that we have as part of the Burlington uh, mandate is we operate a United Nations uh, a chapter as well, which uh, we hold a United Nations Day, for example, as a commemoration on uh, October the 24th. And that's really our outreach program that's really geared towards the youth of the city. And we engage uh, schools and uh, students that are uh, you know, just done in the high school years and even younger, and we bring them on and we show them what the benefits of the United Nations are. And we, host a lot of um, events that kind of educate what uh, you know, it means to being a United Nations delegate and what those important discussions look like. So it's really about training our future leaders. Um, in a word, if you were to replace Burlington's Mundialization Committee, uh, the, the key word that we would have is people connections. We connect with the people. We'd like to think of ourselves as the foreign service arm of the city of Burlington of course, uh, operated by uh, folks in the community. That's a great uh, description. And, you know, I'm reminded of how really this idea of twin cities and, and, and getting to know people across countries, across oceans and across cultures, it really came out of uh, World War II and the experience of Japanese people uh, having a nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And, I had the the honor to travel to our twin city sister uh, sister city, uh, Itabashi, Japan, just before COVID uh, in 2019 and went to uh, Hiroshima and the museum there and, and saw some of the buildings that are still there that they've kept as uh, testaments to the devastation. And one of the things that really struck me was, uh, you know, their, their belief after that uh, horrific event that if people got to know each other and got to understand cultures and understand that there is more that unites us as humans than divides us, that there would be less likelihood of war and, uh, and atomic bombs, of course, in their case. And, uh, and it's, really, uh, it's really thrived uh, across, you know, many, uh, many municipalities have twin cities and we have, uh, we have a number of things, uh, how we, ways that we honor that here in the city. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little later in the show. Uh, but I wanna turn it over to you, uh, Charles, because uh, Appledorn is 
one of our uh, twin cities. It's our it's our other uh, twin city in the Netherlands, uh, a place also marked by war uh, and uh, with a Canadian connection. So, talk to us a little bit about uh, Appledorn and and what's coming up in terms of that critical anniversary this year. Great, thank you. Um, first of all, I, I just want to correct one thing that I'm here on behalf of the chair of the Appledorn committee. Uh, Arnold Koopman, or Ann Koopman rather, who couldn't be here because they're on their way to see their daughter in the US. Uh, but I am a member of the Appledorn Committee uh, and I have been for a long, long time. Um, yeah, I think if you, if you look back the, the relationship uh, with Appledorn and Holland, Netherlands rather, is very special. Let, let me read you a, a little passage B back in, um, in 2015, we produced this little booklet uh, uh, to um, commemor describe our twinning relationship. You've probably seen it, but Princess Margriet uh, from the Netherlands, um, she wrote uh, a, little, uh, a little note, a four-note, and here's just one little paragraph. The friendship Canada and the Netherlands share is one built on personal relationships, the stories of our liberators, Canadian liberators, and the stories of Dutch immigrants in Canada. This is worth protecting for future generations. Yet another very personal story, Canada gave hospitality to my family during the Second World War. It is the country of my birth and my second home. Uh, so I think uh, it really encapsulates all the reasons uh, of the historic relationship, you know, it's it's the liberation of the Netherlands, and and the Canadian troops they uh, liberate Appledorn specifically it was Canadian troops. Um, our students still go to Appledorn in April. Unfortunately, they haven't been for a couple of years due to COVID, and our citizens go early May, all around the time when when the Netherlands and Appledorn were liberated. So I think that historic connection is big. Um, and of course, uh, the, the connection with the princess is very big as well. Yeah, I'll well, just um, mark that date, uh, which is in a couple of days, April 17th, the 77th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands by Canadian troops in, uh, in the Second World War. And, uh, you know, just an incredible, uh, incredible uh, feet by our Canadian troops and they were they, they just wanted to do the right thing and and uh, and save people from the horrors of the war and what uh, the Nazis were inflicting on uh, on many, many countries during that war. So uh, so that's a that's a key uh, key date in the calendar. And, you know, you mentioned COVID and not being able to travel. And I think we've we've gotten even a greater appreciation with the pandemic of just how small the world really is, that things that happen over there are not really over there anymore, uh, that we're all affected in some way by war uh, and, uh, and participated in it. And, and we see now with the conflict, uh, the, the Russian illegal invasion of the, the Ukraine, how many residents right here in Burlington are uh, impacted by that. They've got friends and family. Uh, in Ukraine, so there really is uh, there really isn't that kind of separation anymore between countries, and it, it's a it's a good thing to to think about how we can all contribute to a lasting peace and contribute to um, you know making a better world for all of us because the actions that we take right here in the city of Burlington can affect and impact uh, people around the world, and and certainly um, uh, we've seen that with our twinning relationship and how much they appreciate and and uh, we have. Uh, we have the garden here. I don't know if uh, Hassan wants to talk about that, but the, what, that's one of the many ways uh, for both Japan and uh, Appledorn that we have uh, honored and, and paid tribute to those relationships right here in our city. Uh, do you, did you want to speak to that, Hassan? Go ahead. Yes, I think those gardens are really testament to our friendship because they make the, the, the friendship uh, that is across borders, that is across the pond, physical. You can go and you can sit on a bench and you can commemorate the fact that these are uh, plants, these are benches, these are, are, uh, are actual uh, places that you can sit on and have been donated or have been given lovingly by folks that have been across the, the world. And so our Appledorn Garden, um, Appledorn Park 
downtown Burlington has been a very good feature for that. Um, Princess Marguerite vis visited that uh, uh, park as well to, to give her that importance and significance that this holds special value to not only us, but to her as well. And most recently, we've opened up the Itabashi Park um, in, uh, in Burlington, and that was an award-winning design. And so we were, we were called out by, uh, by winning a provincial level award for making sure we, we introduce the garden with the same characteristics that you would find in a Japanese garden. So these are all um, ideas that really come from a community that's passionate about representing uh, art relationships. And you know they have really been the cornerstone. These parks and these commemorations and these events. Uh, we're coming up on May the 14th. I have to do a quick drop uh, for a, a special date that's coming up. May the 14th is going to be a, a, a double day for us uh, on the Mundialization Committee for Burlington as well, because we commemorate Canada Netherlands Friendship Day. And on the same day um, in the afternoon, we commemorate the Sakura Festival. And uh, both of our twinning cities are represented in events on the same day. And why that's important, that's the passion I was talking about where the community members and the committee members bring everything together to say, this is important to us. And it's, it's attended, it's very well attended by people, not only from Burlington, but from around. Yeah, it's, you know, in those gardens, uh, the, the one, the Itabashi Garden, which is up at Tansley Woods, uh, behind Tansley Woods Community Center, and of course, as you mentioned, the Appledorn is downtown Burlington. Those were things that people can still do safely during COVID, is visit those incredible spaces. And uh, we have so many visitors to our Sakura trees, which were gifted to us by uh, by Japan, uh, by Itabashi, and and of course the tulips that grow in our uh, Appledorn gar garden, um, and, and just you know that that notion of new life and rebirth and uh, and all of that, and and we've done the same. So uh, the the clock tower that's outside the city of Burlington's uh, city hall, there is a replica of that in uh, in Itabashi outside their city hall, which is which is really great to see. Uh, and and there's a park in Appledorn uh, for Burlington as well. So there's there's that reciprocity where we we literally uh, have land in each other's cities to remind ourselves of that important relationship. Uh, Charles, I want to come back to you and, and just uh, Tell us a little bit about how the whole relationship with Appledorn came about. Why Appledorn and, and what it took to get the winning relationship? Well, I think it was a, a grassroots event. As, as, as I think all the twinning relationships in Burlington are, um, it, there were a number of citizens that uh, uh, from, again, Dutch Canadian background that were very interested. Uh, and they got together, they convinced the mayor at that time, Mick Isaac, and the council that this was a worthwhile venture. Uh, and in a period of about a year or so, it all got together. There the same thing, there were citizens in Appledorn. Uh, again, it was grassroots. So it was really, uh, it came out of the citizens' desire, uh, but uh, championed by the politicians at the time. Um, of course, you know, uh, Ontario, is uh, Canada, Ontario, Southwestern Ontario specifically, is, is, there are a lot of uh, Dutch Canadian immigrants from the 50s, 60s, and later uh, that came here and have been very successful, uh, made a good contribution to the economy, I think. Uh, so, you know, the Canada, that, this, this, this 20 is all about the contribution of, of um, uh, Dutch Canadians to, to our economy. And it's also about the, the historic relationship uh, and it's about the future. And I think more and more now we are looking towards the future. We can look past uh, and remember what happened, uh, but on the other hand, uh, to keep um, this alive and going, we have to look towards, towards the future and get young people involved, which is why we do student exchanges. Uh, and I would say that's been the most successful thing that the uh, Appledore and Mundialization Committees have really uh, done or accomplished over the years is the ongoing um, student, student, student exchanges. Um, I would think that if you look at probably uh, several hundred students have been back and forth. 
But if you if you take into uh, their families into consideration, their brothers, sisters, aunts and uncle, it's touched thousands of people on both sides of the ocean. Uh, and, and that's really what this is all about. I, I think, you know, um, twinning um, allows cities to play a role in the international community. So it's not just federal government, provincial governments, it's also local governments. And if, if we do that, then maybe we'll have less problems like we've got in, uh, in the Ukraine right now, you know, because people are connecting themselves and there's a reason to get along, right? So it's not, a, it's, it's about learning from each other. Um, and uh, I think that's what we've done with both Itabashi and Appledorn and both relationships in their own way have been very, very successful. Um, I would like to recommend that uh, the, the uh, May 14th event, because it is a great one. And it's quite a difference too, because the, the um, Sakura Festival is more of a cultural festival, Japanese music, dance, song. The Appledorn, the Canadian, Canada Netherlands Friendship Day is more of a, it's more formal, I guess. You have uh, more speeches, but you have a lot of youth involved. You get to meet the Dutch Consul General. And of course, we all get to meet you as well. Uh, so it's a different, they're very different events, um, but they've both contributed a lot over the years. And we're really pleased that this year, uh, for the first time in, in a few years now, we we're, were able to do this in person again. So we just hope that uh, the sixth wave is remains small rather than gets gets big. So. That's very well said, and I know uh, there are always questions, and, and probably, I know it took a lot of courage uh, from the, the mayor of the day, Mayor McIsaac, to say, look, we're, we're going to invest in this, we're going to spend some money, and, and I know part of Part of that is the exchanges, the, the visiting delegations. So the mayors come to Burlington and, and the mayors go every five years, we do that exchange. And, uh, you know, it's time, it's money, it's resource. And, you know, you've, you've articulated really well uh, what, what the benefit can be. I, I can speak personally that going to Japan, uh, we, you know, it's like a study tour, right? Uh, we, we visited their city hall, learned about their form of government. We visited, uh, you know, many different uh, museums and, and places of interest, their art gallery to, to set up an art exchange. We visited um, uh, their public works area to learn how they do flood management. And this was very soon after we experienced uh, the Burlington flood. So, you know, it just kept striking me through that whole trip how, uh, you know, how met all of us face very similar problems. And it's a way to it's actually like a professional development at the same time as you're building friendships and realizing, uh, you know, as I said earlier, that we have way more in common with people, uh, even people across the world that speak a different language uh, than, than what divides us. And I'm sure you will have something to say about that, Hassan. So I'm gonna put it back to you and, and talk about, uh, you know, what, what you see as the value of these, uh, of these relationships. Yeah, so I think coming into um, me being relatively new in Burlington, I've moved here, what about five years and change now. And, and I was looking at the community side of, uh, you know, venturing and giving my hand into some great projects. And this is what really struck me is the passion that this community has and the committee has is to raising what has been a historic um, bond between our two cities, but it doesn't end on the history. It's forward looking. And so when you mention uh, the Japanese emergency management, uh, you know, preparations and their their infrastructure to manage those things, those are learnings for our city. Mm -hmm. And when you mention, uh, you know, how the climate change has impacted uh, Netherlands as a whole and what they've done to reclaim land and to make sure that, you know, they, they survive in the midst of a changing world, those are learnings for us. And at the same time, you know, for, for Burlington, it's a great story for us. We've been one of the best communities to live in uh, in Canada recently. And so, uh, from our standard of living, you know, sharing with them what are tips and tricks, that really is a forward-looking discussion. So when I came in here, I was looking at it with the, you know, the bonds that we have in history really carried us for, for what, where we are today, but it's really these discussions in the future that are going to hold us. And so a quick plug for the United Nations Committee is if you see uh, the subcommittee there is, these are all students from high schools. 
And, uh, you know, one of the best things that I've had the pleasure of seeing them in action is to see the passion and the spark in their eyes when they're debating on model United Nations topics. And they look just like the folks that are sitting in the United Nations General Assembly buildings. And they have that passion to go in and take it into their futures and their professions tomorrow. And they're gonna be the next generation of people that you know, represent Canada, for example, and the United Nations. So when you put all of this together, it's a very forward-looking group. And I've had nothing but uh, you know, the best of times serving amongst the likes of Charlie and, and, uh, and the Crown on the Mondialization Committee. I think that's a really important point. And you know, one of the things that struck me um, when I was in, in Itabashi in their city hall is they had a whole permanent display about the city of Burlington, but it wasn't just the history. It wasn't just our heritage. And we do a really good job, I think, in Burlington. Uh, every year we have Heritage Month and, and Week, and we, you know, we look back 100 years. Uh, what we haven't done so much is, is talk about and celebrate what we're doing in the here and now and looking forward. And uh, I remember coming back from Itabashi and saying, you know, I learned more about Burlington in Itabashi <laughs> than, uh, that, than I did here and because we we kind of stop at a certain point if it's 100 years old we know about it but what about what about now what about last week what about some of the things that that we can celebrate now as a community and so we are now in discussions uh, city council and our staff about uh, doing some sort of a celebrate Burlington day uh, you know, and that'll that'll be a discussion that unfolds over the next few months and, and hopefully next year we can bring something online, but it would be about celebrating the here and now and the future. So I, I think that is really important and, and having our uh, our citizens groups, our advisory committees, which is, you know, the really the, the breath and the life and the heartbeat of our community is having our residents come forward like yourselves on our various uh, citizens committees to uh, to look ahead and to to give us advice as decision makers on how we can make a better Burlington. I want to come back uh, to you, Charles, uh, around what you see as the future of uh, montialization and some of the things that you are working on. Okay, um, I guess it's been unfortunate the last couple of years uh, that we haven't really had a lot of in person visits back and forth. Uh, I do think, though, that. Uh, um, We've also learned to do things virtually. Uh, last year, I think we had a Canada Netherlands friendship event online, which actually had more hits than we've ever had visitors in person. So I, th I think, you know, using our social media, using other ways, it's actually helped us understand that we, we need to use all the tools in our toolbox, I guess, uh, to, uh, to move forward. And, and probably the future will be more of a hybrid future uh, than just in-person stuff. We've learned that. I mean, the whole workplace, everything's gonna change that way, I think. So So in some ways, there'll be some good things due to the, due to the pandemic. Um, but I think that the future needs to focus on things we can learn from each other uh, more so than just the history. Uh, I mean, the, his the history is important and you we can never forget, um, but I think we need to uh, get our schools involved, get our youth involved, uh, and focus on, you know, uh, joint projects uh, with students, joint projects even with citizens. Um, because if you don't keep the grassroots involved, it will sort of die with, with old timers like me that, you know, once we lose interest, that, that type of thing, it's got to keep going. So um, I, I really think we, we need to broaden what we're doing uh, and I think we have tried to do that um, within the possibilities of the pandemic. I really hope that, uh, I know the Dutch actually desperately wanted to come over here this year already. I think we, we said, well, it's a little difficult because how can we guarantee host families? Uh, so, but hopefully 2023 will be different for everybody. 
Very well said. Uh, I, and I think the world is getting even closer together because of technology. We've had the same experience at the city of Burlington, where we've had the highest turnout to public meetings through online technology. So it is here to stay and it can be used. It doesn't replace uh, in person. We only have about a minute and a half left. Uh, Hassan, I'm going to turn it to you for any last thoughts about what the future holds. Sure, I think, um, you know, Charlie said it very well and, and, and that our future really, we've evolved through the pandemic and we've really made use of our resources well. I think the biggest thing we're going to itch to coming back towards is the people to people contact, right? Having these um, great programs in place and not having that, uh, that personal touch uh, has really, you know, put us in the backseat, but we haven't given up. I'm optimistic that we are looking forward to planning for the events that uh, when we're back together again, we will know, you know, there's going to be a full calendar of things that we'll have between Apple Door and Itabashi and Burlington citizens to do. And uh, with that, I'll also say that I think I'm optimistic to see that our community has been very uh, receptive of those. This is, these are times right now, what's happening in the, in the world internationally uh, of reaching out uh, to others and very importantly, understanding other people's perspectives is really, really the time of the hour right now. And so this community and this committee is the perfect place to know that you've got two or three cities and people internationally where you can connect with each other and uh, uh, you, you know, learn from each other. So I'm looking forward to that most. Very well said. Well, we are out of time. I want to give a huge thanks to Hassan Raza, who is the chair of the City of Burlington's Mundialization Committee, and to Charles Minkin, who is a member of the Appledorn Subcommittee of the Mundialization Committee. Thank you so much both for being here. I look forward to uh, May 14th, Canada Netherlands Friendship Day and the Sakura Festival, two very important events in the calendar for the life of the City of Burlington. Uh, signing off on another edition of Burlington Matters. I'm Mayor Marianne Mead-Ward. Have a great day.